episode 046 with Romeo Marquez Jr. This episode was brought to you by my children's book, My Lola, which translates as my grandmother in the Filipino Tagalog language. It's a beautiful story that celebrates Filipino traditions, food and family. Family connection, music and memory making, there's no greater gift you can give a child. Available now on Amazon and all leading online bookstores. Welcome to the One Voice Can Change the World podcast. I'm your host, Tina Bangle, vocal coach, professional vocalist and author. With each episode, we bring to you inspiring people changing the world. Romeo Marquez Jr. is an international speaker, best-selling author and the protege of Jack Canfield, founder of the billion-dollar brand Chicken Soup for the Soul and number one New York best-selling author of The Success Principles. He has delivered more than 1,000 presentations to over a million audience members across the United States, Canada, Asia, Australia and Europe, helping organizations, entrepreneurs, artists and CEOs to achieve extraordinary results. From the TEDx stage in India to working with notable names such as Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Jim Carrey and Kelly Clarkson, Romeo's mission is to help people maximize their greatness so they can live a life with purpose and passion. Without further ado, welcome Romeo Marquez Jr. Hey, Romeo, thank you so much. Welcome to the One Voice Can Change the World podcast. I'm so thrilled that you're here and um, we have our special uh, students who are going to help me interview you. So thank you so much for for saying yes to the podcast interview. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. It's a gift and an honor to just be in all of your presence. I'm really thrilled to to be able to finally say hello to you and, and talk to you face to face because we've been messaging for quite a while and um, uh, I first saw you at uh, Jack Canfield's BTS success uh Breakthrough Through Success uh, program, and you were just so amazing. I was like, oh, yay, there's a Filipino <laughs> warming up the audience, and you just you just brought so much amazing energy. I just loved it so much. So um, let us know um, where you – how you got started with your career. For sure. All right. So I don't know how to go about this because I could go about this in different angles, but the fact that you guys – uh, this is like, or, or it surrounds like performance and artistic expression. Oh, I'm going to resonate with this uh, podcast so much. So um, as a young person, four years old, young person, I was a break dancer. So I loved break dancing. So that was my thing. So I was really into that. Did it in middle school. And then high school came around. I stopped dancing and got into sports. So I played football and I played volleyball. But inside my heart during high school, I wanted to do theater, right? I wanted to be on stage, but I didn't because I was an athlete and athletes don't do that. And uh, really I was afraid of failure. I was afraid of rejection. I was afraid of not being good enough. I was afraid of not being accepted by my friends uh, with the things that, was, that I truly wanted to express. And so it wasn't until I went to a community college after high school where I took my first acting class. And I remember there was an audition for a play, never auditioned for a play in my life. I went up to my acting teacher and I said, there's an audition for a play, should I do it? And she said these words that changed my life. She said, Romeo, you won't know if you don't go. And I was like, girl, say that again. And she <laughs> said, Romeo, you won't know if you don't go. And when you go there, just make bold choices. So I go to the audition, I show up and, you know, you have all these people connecting with one another. I felt like I was like the new kid on the block. So I didn't really know anybody. Anyway, fast forward, I took the script, uh, you know, did the whole cold reading. I made the bold choices. I ended up getting the part, which led to other parts in my passion for theater started to come out even more and more. And eventually I went to UCLA to study theater, film and television. 
And one thing to know in that process of starting community college uh, and taking my first acting class, my sister got me into personal development. That's my introduction to personal development through a calendar, quote calendar she gave me. And so every day there was a quote, a positive quote. And so that led to another book, to another book, to another book. And so I really immersed personal development with the, some of the things that I was teaching in or I was learning in, in acting. And so after UCLA, I ended up, um, you know, auditioning and being on music videos, doing small roles, commercials, so forth and so on. And I ended up opening an acting school. I started teaching acting, opened it up uh, an acting school then opened up a performing arts school. And here's where like the twist comes and we could dive into this later. Um, the P performing arts school, I don't know if you've ever felt this or been around this, it just became this negative toxic environment and I felt in my heart that I had to disconnect from it. And so I did that and I was like, what am I gonna do now? Like I put my heart, soul and energy into creating this dream school for young people so that they can express themselves freely and dive into the talents and gifts they know they have the vision for. And so I said to myself, I always wanted to write a one man show. Mm. And then I went, it's time. And I went, ooh, that's a good title. And so what ended up happening is I ended up booking a venue, didn't write the show yet. I uh, sold tickets, created a poster, didn't write the show yet. So it was a week before the show. And I was like, oh my gosh, the show's next week. But I had these ideas in my head of what it could be. So I had like a week long of staying up late and putting this together. And so I did the first show in Silicon Valley and then did it again in Silicon Valley. Then I did it in Vegas. Then I did it in New York and then Indiana to India. And so all these different, and uh, throughout all that, that those, that led to like other opportunities, which we could get into later. And I share that because while I was after this one big dream thing, it got stripped away from me or I disconnected from it. And even though I entered the unknown, I just trusted what was within me and followed that. And so using your intuition as a guide for the next steps, even though it may not make sense, um, in your head, but trusting the process. That's one of my messages that I want everybody to get from this. And so that eventually led to other great opportunities and um, end up being a professor for acting. And I like, even in the midst of that, was just traveling the world, speaking, training, and um, helping people just live out their greatness because other people have mentored me and guided me. And part of my mission now, or not part, but one of my sayings is, uh, my passion is your potential, and my mission is to help you live it now. So when I see people live their full potential, uh, and I play some part in it, even if it's just a little bit, that helps me fulfill my purpose and my potential. So that, that's, that's me in a nutshell. Wow. wow. We, we love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's amazing. Just... Um, and, and that's something that we, I kind of instill in my students as well. It's okay to pivot. And, you know, sometimes we have this massive dream of um, making it. Like for me, it was, I wanted to be in Miss Saigon when I was 19 years old because I heard about this show and I, I went for the interview to the auditions. And then that was my thing, like, I, that, w that was my um, kind of, you know, goal to, to, and I didn't make it anyway. <laughs> but if I didn't make it, I would have not opened up this school. So, you know, things like that happen and then, you know, find that those opportunities um, and, and go for it yeah, in, in the intuition, you know. Mm -hmm. you and, know. and part, part of that, and we could dive into this later if need be, but, you know, when, when people feel like they failed or they didn't get what they wanted, an acronym for FAIL is F-A-I-L is finding answers in life. Rejection is also redirection. You know, it's it, Wayne Dyer, author, speaker who had, was passed. One of the things that has really stuck with me, um, one of his sayings is, you know, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And as an artist, you will go through uh, uh, ups and downs and more downs than ups but it's how you perceive those downs 
uh, as an opportunity to grow from, you know, the, there's that saying, it's not whether you win or lose, it's whether you win or learn, you know? So I, I can break down acronyms later. <laughs> yes. We love that. Yeah. yeah. We love that. Especially, um, you know, there's, we've gone through this year, a few auditions and some kids haven't been able to make it to where they wanted to go. But um, yeah, that fail acronym is amazing. So yeah. For sure. Oh, okay. So let's, um, do you want to ask your question, yeah. Bridget? Um, so what was it like to work with some huge, um, huge stars like Jim Carrey and Oscar winner, um, Anthony Hopkins? Okay. So I have a great story with Jim Carrey and I'll, I'll share that in a moment, but Anthony Hopkins, one of the big things that I learned from him, cause he taught a couple of master classes at UCLA and seeing number one, how he connects with the students. And two, one of my biggest takeaways from him was uh, he takes different um, different ways of approaching acting and making it his own. And so instead of doing it like one specific way, you learn from this teacher, you learn from this coach, you learn from this technique and this technique, and eventually you make it your own. So he doesn't have like one specific way, but he made it his own way. And so that really opened my eyes to going, there isn't just one way to do something, but it it can be your way based on your experiences and the teachings uh, you've learned. So that's one thing that I learned from uh, Anthony Hopkins for Jim Carrey. So there's a story in The Success Principles by Jack Canfield, where he talks about the power of visualization. And in a nutshell, he was living in Canada, doing custodial work, aspiring to be a comedian. He there were times where he was living in his car and he ended up going to LA. And one of the things that, you know, while auditioning and doing the other things he did, he would go up Mulholland Drive that would oversee the city of Los Angeles and visualize himself becoming this actor, this person that wants to work with different producers and basically make it big in Hollywood. And so eventually that happened, right? And so when I read that story in that book, promise you this is what happened. I said, I visualized myself working with Jim Carrey. It wasn't just like, okay, I'm, I'm going to, I think I'm, just, I, I just threw this dream vision out there. I don't know if it's going to happen, but why not? Let's just see if it's real. So two weeks later, I get called onto the set of the number 23 to do some extra work. And Jim Carrey was a star. And so I was one of the students and the first AD, the first assistant director said, all right, everybody get off set. We have to change the film. So everybody goes. Uh, me and the other extras are talking amongst one another. And then Jim Carrey comes through the door. And it, inside my heart, I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's Jim Carrey. But outside, I was like, you know, trying to play it cool. <laughs> <laughs> and the first AD, 10 minutes later, says, all right, everybody get back on set. Everybody leaves except for me and Jim Carrey. And so we're at craft services. And so Jim, I approached Jim Carrey and I go, Hey, Jim. He goes, all right. I go, hi, Jim. I'm Romeo. He goes, hi, Romeo. I'm Jim. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And he, I, I didn't have to repeat the story about him and visualization, but I did bring up, I said, so I read a story about you and visualization. Does it work? And I quote him verbatim. He goes, Romeo, it works. I go, really? He goes, really? And then he goes, if it could work for me, it could work for anybody. And so after that, we went back on set, back on set. And every break, we'd, we'd connect and, and talk. And just him being the genuine person that he is, um, we, we, however you see him in interviews, that's how he really is. He wasn't trying to be this like Hollywood star, like, let me have my space. He was genuinely connecting with me and uh I wish I could say, oh, yeah, me and Jim Carrey are friends. No, that's not the case. But it was that moment where, number one, it allowed me to see, like, if you really visualize something, it doesn't always mean it's going to happen right away. It could happen two years from now. It could happen, like, 10 years from now, whatever the case is. But it helped me realize, like, wow, the power of visualization works. And two, uh, the other thing that I, I got from that is being able to connect with people on a genuine level. Uh, and that's one of the things that I 
not only got from Jim Carrey, but it's something that I continue to carry with me, whether it's speaking on stage, whether it's one-on-one -on -one clients, whether it's just people I just met, being able to connect with somebody on a genuine level will help you um, just live better and breathe better rather than trying to put on this act. There's a saying in acting, it, it, it's not about being interesting, but being interested. So th that's what it was like working with uh, Anthony Hopkins and Jim Carrey. Yay. Crazy. <laughs> wow. So in 2014, uh, myself alongside fellow One Voice members had the opportunity to create a video tribute to the Black Eyed Peas. Now, uh, you were also in one of their film clips. So tell us what was it like to work with such a world renowned band? Yes, yeah, so working with the Black Eyed Peas was number one, amazing. And two, what I, I got from working on the set of Pump It, uh, we, not puppet, but pump it, <laughs> it is, is going back to the Jim Carrey lesson is genuinely connecting. One of the things I, what I got, uh, from, wait, let me back up. One of the people within the black eyed peas was will I am. And there was a moment where I was able to, uh, speak with him and he goes, you know, check out this part, you know, this part where it goes, damn. Da, 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 damn right I go yeah he goes I really didn't know what to write in this next verse and I was like damn and he's like oh that's good damn and so he just he, he just went with that I went wow because I think for somebody at that level they put obviously they do put a, a lot of thought and energy to it but there are moments where it's like let me just go off of inspiration and, and go with that and not overthink it because sometimes when we overthink things that prevents us from taking action and that's another thing I wanted to add from the visualization story is it, it doesn't just take visualization to make something happen you have to take action to make things happen and respond to the necessary feedback. And so being able to learn that of just like allowing and just be in the moment and just flow and genuinely connecting. And again, meeting with the other, it's not even just with the black eyed peas, but with the other people on set, because what I, one of the things that I realized about what life's about is, is the relationships you build along the way. And sometimes people come in for a reason and sometimes people come in for a season. And so some, and that season could be just in that moment or it could be for three months or a year, but whatever the case is, being able to be intentional with those relationships while they're there and making new ones along the way. I just have one more question. Um, so you said on one of your tech, TED Talks that you studied at UCLA, of course, um, but that it helped you understand the complexities of human behavior and motivation. Now, how did that inspire you to obviously create inspirational quotes and inspire other people? And how does that make you understand other people more in terms of inspiring? Yes, yeah, so the way I see acting, uh, again, let's go back to acronyms. When I was teaching acting, it was all about being truthful to the situation at hand, being truthful. And so what the acronym for ACT I created is always creating truth. You're always creating truth. And then as I evolved in my life, I learned that I was acting of like taking action. But I also realized that what acting is about is ACT, uh, always creating transformation. And so when I, when I realized that one of the things I realized is that when I'm in this in the state of flow and when I get out of my own way, things become a lot easier, easier said than done. But when I'm in my own way, when I get in my head and get into that negative self-talk of like, I can't do it. I, I don't know if I have what it takes, so forth and so on. It blocks me from receiving that inspiration. And so wherever I can, and uh, sometimes I have to be intentional about this. If I'm not feeling inspired, I need to surround myself in the energy to be inspired so that I can inspire others. And that could be with people. It could be in conversations like this. It could be with books and videos, but I'm more of like an energy, energy person. So I like being around people. So whatever that source is for you, uh, one of the things that I, I strongly feel uh, on how people could live a, a better and happier life is surround yourself with positive, like-minded people because those are the ones that are going to push you forward to not only be better, but to live better and 
uh, do th more things that are fulfilling. Um, I can unpack a lot more of that when it comes to human behavior, but as it relates to inspiration, that's what I would say. And last thing, one of my sayings, I think I might've mentioned this earlier, like my one man show is called It's Time. That's one of the reasons why I always say it's time, but my acronym for it's time is igniting transformation so that inspiration moves every day. ITS. T I M E, igniting transformation so that inspiration moves every day. So, inspiration happens for me when I help others transform their lives. So, it, it, it's a, you know, the law of re reciprocity. So, we all need each other to be inspired. Yeah, yeah. yeah we do. Good question, Jared. Well done. Um, but yeah, amazing. That's, uh, I, I love that too. Um, and like these guys and all my students inspire me. And that's why this, you're actually our first um, podcast interview in this setting. <laughs> so, and I thought wow. you'd be the perfect person because Yay. it kind of sets everybody up inspired and motivated and sets the tone up for this podcast because. For sure. Yeah, as, as you mentioned, your acting was, you know, your inspiration, but at the same time, um, singing for these guys, you know, it leads to other things and, and helps them in life as well with their confidence. Yeah. Um, I did another stalk on your Instagram um, during the Tuesday, and I did see that you make your own songs. Now, um, and they're also they're so inspiring, they're almost like affirmations. So I'm a songwriter myself. Uh, what's the process like for you, and what are your inspirations for making songs? So I, I'd love... <laughs> This might be a limitation I have for myself, but I, I, I don't consider, consider myself a songwriter, but that's not true. I did write songs. <laughs> um, I don't consider myself a music artist, but I guess I consider myself just an artist because I have friends that are like really great songwriters. I have friends that are really great singers, rappers, so forth and so on. And so I, I say all that to say like me as an artist, whether it's on stage, acting, speaking, performing, uh, doing songs, whatever the case might may be, it, it's my way of expressing myself. So another acronym uh, is LIFE, living in full expression, L-I-F-E. And another part to that is loving in full expression. And another part to that is letting, uh, letting it free every day, le letting your intuition free every day. So for me, when I wrote that good morning song. Um, I literally wrote that in the parking lot um, in Target. I don't know if you guys have Target yeah. out, out, out there <laughs> in Australia, but I was in, and I, I booked a, a studio, like studio time and I didn't write the song yet. It was one of those like, oh no, I have to get done. Uh, I'm not saying this is the best way to write songs, but when I'm under pressure, like, oh, I commit, like I have to follow yeah. through. And so I ended up just writing, even though I, I had ideas already. So it's not like I just wrote it there. I had these ideas. And so that from there, that led to like, oh, I, 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 I hear the music. And like, you know, you start to like have things in your mind that connect and I'll just write it down. And the, I think the main thing is don't judge what you write down and don't judge the first idea as a bad, thing. like allow it. Because people, that first song, and there's been many cases with this, where people just write that first song, and it's amazing. And sometimes it may take people like a hundred times to get it right. And so when one song, when I was completed one song, it inspired another, and it inspired another. And the songs that are right are aligned with who I am as an individual, right? I'm not trying to write something that doesn't align with my values. So as you mentioned, they're like affirmations. I do affirmations every day. I speak affirmations to other people's souls. So that, that is a heartbeat of uh, my songwriting, if you will. And going back to Wayne Dyer, like he said a quote, when I, had, when I just opened up a performing arts school, I saw him after an event. I asked him, what is something that I can tell my students that's from you? And he said, don't die with your music still in you. And I was like, oh, that's powerful. Let me say that again. Don't die with your music still in you. And so whether it's actually like music, um, but that music could also mean like your message. It could also mean your talent. 
your gift. And so going back to the songwriting question, it's being able to go the intuition, uh, not judging yourself along the way, um, being kind to yourself in the process. And at the end of the day, for, for, for us all as artists, um, it's, it's, it's all about expression and learning and uh, not judging it because what you express within is going to heal and help other people uh, more than you think, so. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, so um, if you don't mind, would you like to sing us one of your favorite <laughs> original songs? <laughs> Just a snippet. Just Surely. a snippet. We'll, we'll groove with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so since, since I don't have the stage, let, let's do the best that I can here. Um, it's the affirmation song, and we'll, we'll do like the first part. Um, and all, all you have to do is just repeat the words after me, and I might just repeat it with you, but I'll have the track play because I'm not doing this a cappella whatsoever. <laughs> um, here we go. So with this song, it's, it's an affirmation song. So I'll, I'll let it ride out and just, just repeat after me. And for those listening uh, on the other side, um, sing along with us. Here we go. Now it's time for affirmations to affirm the greatness that you are. It's time to proclaim the true essence of your being and all that you would right, like to you create go. in your life. R repeat after, after me. me. I'm amazing. I'm amazing. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am strong. I am strong. I'm a success. I'm a success. I do it all with ease. I do it all with ease. I'm living my dreams. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. I make things possible. I make things possible. I am healthy. Oh, I am healthy. I am healthy. I am kind. I am kind. I am grateful. I am grateful to be alive. To be alive. I am. So during this part of the song, I usually have people say their affirmation. I am beautiful. I have what it takes. I I can do it. So forth and so on. And so that's a piece of a song that I can share with you right now. Yay! We love that. <laughs> And that's, I think you played that at BTS. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah, that was amazing because it was just like, you know, we were so into the activities and, and that really helped, you know, change the energy of the, of the room and, and um, yeah, gave us heaps of energy. Um, thanks, Bridget, for that question. Um, so this is a question that we ask all our, our guests. What is your obsession at the moment? My obsession at the moment is helping others get their message out to the world. Cool. That is my current <laughs> obsession. It's always been my obsession, but I was yeah. having a conversation with somebody earlier. I realized like I genuinely love seeing people shine because when you shine, I shine and it yeah. just makes the world uh, a brighter place. Okay. So we've got another, if you can share with us another obsession, but a, a, maybe quirky one yeah. because Jared's obsession that. is video games. Mine is watching okay. hoarders videos and yours is stalking people on Instagram. Like actors. So for me, it, it's, I, I'm obsessed with UFC, like ultimate fighting oh, championship. No I, yeah, that's something I, I don't pay attention to news, but I will pay attention to MMA news. And that is, I, I'm totally, I don't want to say I'm obsessed, but I, I guess like you, if I read it every day <laughs> and I watch the videos of the fights. In that? Oh yeah. Adesanya, you got Volkanovsky. Uh, yeah. He was, he was, an, he's an Aussie. He beat, um, uh, Holloway. His uh, trilogy fight, huh? Yes. Yes. Did you watch it? I know. Oh, I a hundred percent did. Oh, I, was my God. <laughs> I was sad. I was sad. I was, I assume you're a Volkanovsky fan. Oh yeah, because you know I'm. Of here. course, it's like, it's of like course. I have to support him. Of course, of course, and so you know that's yeah, that's an obsession that I have for sure. Oh, awesome. Um, okay, so what's one song that changed your life? Many songs, but one that really reminds me of why I'm here on Earth, and that's helped me along the way is Beyonce's "I Was Here." Oh, that's a powerful song. 
And so being able to listen to that from time to time, it helps me, it reminds me of why I do what I do. And there's that exercise of what would your 85 year old self say on what he or she would um, have said about his or her life. And being able to take that into the present helps me live more intentionally and more purposefully um, so that I can, you know, do the best that I can while I can Incredible. on this earth. Yeah, KK, who's not with us today because she couldn't make it today, but she was supposed to host with us. That was her um, end of year song last year. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. She, she sang that really beautifully. So um, we have a few more questions for you, just a couple more. But one of the most important question is One Voice Can Change the World podcast. Oh, that's the name of this podcast, One Voice Can Change the World. What does that mean to you? To me, that means one voice. I think of like one mentor. I think of the different conversations who expressed or shared a thought to me that inspired me. So even though it's just, I could look in different ways, but what comes to mind right away is one voice, one person speaking to you, one genuine connection could make all the difference on how you go about the next chapter of your life. So pay attention to that one voice that might come along the way in this season because it might help you build the miracles that you are destined to live. For example, going back to when I went to my first acting class and audition, that was that one voice that I needed to hear from Wayne Dyer, don't die with your music still in you. That was that one voice in that time that not only was given to me, but that voice is going to be expressed out there to other people to pay it forward. And then the other thought around one voice is we all have um, a song within us and it's your duty and your responsibility to share that voice to, to remind people of who they are because it's your voice that can make somebody else's life that much better. Yeah. Beautiful. I haven't heard that one before. So thank you so much for sharing that. That's, that's amazing too. Um, we just want to say thank you so much for being part Hold of on. the show. I, 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 I don't want to even end the show yet because I want to speak <laughs> what, what's in the room. What's in the room is that we're all Filipino here, right? Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> and you know, Bridget being half, but you're still you're Filipino. Um, and I, I want to bring that up. Uh, not to target a specific group because me growing up while I was around a lot of Filipinos, I also have friends of other ethnicities and I never really um, participated in, you know, the Filipino clubs or organizations, even though I had mm. friends a part of that because it wasn't just, it wasn't my thing. But along my journey, I was usually the only Filipino in the room. Like yeah. there aren't very many Filipino motivational speakers. There are very, not very many Filipino, at least a while ago, uh, Filipino authors, but more coaches, more speakers, more art. There are starting to like come about into the world. And so in my journey, I, the way I broke through that is knowing where we came from and understanding what our ancestors went through to get us to where we are today. For example, I, I connected, I have a great relationship with my parents and I, I spent time with my dad the other day. I said, dad, did you know your grandpa? He goes, not really. And, I, and then I asked him, did your dad know his grandpa? And then I tried to trace it back. And I said, what did, did your dad go to high school? He goes, we didn't have high school back then. And it just put things into perspective because he was a farmer and my dad has its own story. He came from the Philippines to the United States on very little money, had two engineering degrees, but ended up working at Macy's as a stock, as a stock you know, person with shoes. But he did what he can to get where I am today, along with my mom. And so the sacrifices and the resilience and the strength that us Filipinos have, I think it's important for us 
to carry that along with our talents, with our gifts, and with the individualism that we have within ourselves. And so I say that not to, again, pocket Filipinos, whatever your background is, I want you to think about the, the, the people that have came before you because you are where you are today because of the choices and decisions they've made to get to where you are today. And, it, and you are the ancestor, ancestors of the people that are gonna be coming after you. So in this short time we call life, uh, one of the things I like to say is uh, in life, there's a start date and there's an end date and a hyphen in between it. And it's up to us and how we fill in that blank. And so I, I, I just want to encourage everybody to, to embrace who they are fully, truly, and, and to not let anybody stop them from doing what they do because your culture, your community, the people around you is going to not only need you, but uh, lean on them for the support and help because know that we can't do what we want to do on our own. We need each other. Yeah. I love and that it's, time. it's time. It is time. <laughs> it's time. It is time. That's, um, that's wonderful. We, um, I love that how you speak about generations and how important it is to tap into the generations before us because we can use that as fuel to take us to the next level or the next part of our lives. Mm -hmm. mm. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. so uh, we, we just love having this conversation with you. Hopefully we can, um, you know, the kids will go and uh, follow you on Instagram and, and learn more from you. Um, is there any, any way that you can um, share your uh, links or- Yeah, or you can just go to- Follow you. Yeah, the best way is Instagram, just go to Romy Marquez Jr. Um, and DM me, reach out to me, however I can support, help, uh, whatever that looks like. Uh, I just love, you know, seeing other people live out their full potential. So um, continue to shine in whatever way that looks like. And if you need some inspiration, swing on by my page because hopefully a message or a video will uh, give you at least 1% more inspiration uh, that you need. Yes, thank you so much, Romeo. Um, thank you, Bridget and, and Jared for uh, helping me host this show. And yeah, we, we hope that, um, you know, you'll, this podcast will inspire other people uh, to, you know, live their best life, just like what you're doing. And thank you for the inspiration today. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Yay. Are we done? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> and cut. Oh. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, go. The one and voice. There. You go. One voice there. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, you easy, got it. Easy. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> no. That one. Oh, with right hand with the O, I think. And there you go. Yeah, one voice. Go. It's time. You know.